Our next speaker is um, uh, Matthew Gain. Uh, those of you who uh, engage closely with the media on a regular basis, and I know that's many of you, may see Matthew's name pop up from time to time. I'm constantly seeing it um, where um, journalists from the SMH um, are contacting Matthew for um, a perspective of PR professional most recently last week uh, with regards to the use of Wi-Fi by British Telecom in London and uh, the kind of blocking that they're trying to do of people using other services. Matthew is a member of our industry advisory um, uh, group. Um, he's a uh, very experienced uh, PR professional and uh, it's my pleasure to welcome him this morning. Thank, thank you, Paul, and, and um, thank you, Rosemary, for having me. I was, this is genuinely one of the one of my favourite things to do: talk, talk to people and, and be the centre of attention and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, I, <laughs> no, 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 thank you, and thank you all for turning up. I was I was kind of thinking last night, and I, I stayed at my parents' house last night, and they were like, "Well, what are you doing tomorrow? And who's going to be there?" And I was like, oh, I'm, "I don't know. It's going it's to be early, so <laughs> there might not be that many people there. I, I, I think I would have struggled." And and so I started to think, because they gave us five minutes, um, which again was concerning, because I was like, only five minutes? God, I want to be out there for much longer than that. But, um, the, and, and so I just started to think about some of the things, talking, talking from a student point of view to, to, to what, what, what to expect and maybe some tips and tricks. And just to give you a bit of background, I, I work at Edelman, which is a, a PR agency. And so we work for, for a range of clients, some of them really interesting. We're doing work with um, climate change and, and the government around that kind of stuff. Uh, and and we, we work for a, for a lot of brands like Samsung and, um, and eBay and a whole range of different people. So we, we, we do lots of interesting things, um, or at least I think it's interesting. But, um, and I often, I often see a lot of graduates coming in or, or, or want, wanting to get jobs. And I just try, try to think about perhaps that's, that's where you guys are at and, and what you're trying to think about. And I just thought, well, thinking back from my career, what are some of the things and, and what are some of the tips that I could give? And I, I, I try to break it down into to three stories. And, and, and I just wrote them down here. And I, th I think th the first thing I can give counsel on is, is persistence. And, and I think back to, to, to my first job interview. At, um, it was a, a, it's an Ogilvy PR firm. And it was, um, I found out about it ironically at the, um, well, perhaps not ironically, um, at the, the, careers, the careers sector here. So I guess <laughs> that, that's probably not ironic. Should be, that's, how, that's how it should work, according to the <laughs> I, I think ironic now because I don't think that's where I would, I would go now. Um, and I rang up, I, I couldn't pronounce the name properly, it was, it was Howarth Communication, it was spelled H-O-W-O-R-T-H, it was difficult, so I, I'm sure I mispronounced it. And I made all the wrong first impressions and they said actually the, the applications have already closed. And, and, I, said, and, I, and I, I said something along the lines of, you, you haven't even met me yet. It, it, it would be wrong of you to close them without having, <laughs> having, having, having a chat with me. I, I'm that good. <laughs> Arrogant twat that I want. <laughs> um, and and the, <laughs> I think she was just, the, the person on the phone was a little bit flabbergasted. She was like, no, 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 really, we, we, they're, they're closed. I was like, I tell you what, can I, can I just send you through my, my, my CV anyway? And, and then maybe you might want to have a think about it. Uh, and anyway, they, um, they got me in. And we had an interview, and um, I got the job. Uh, they got me to do a presentation, or spelling mistakes, or through my presentation, all this, and this, that, and the other. Um, it, was, it was horrible. But anyway, I got, I got there, and, and the, the owner of the agency um, said to me later, she said, the reason why we chose you, and the reason why we interviewed you, was because that door was shut, but you, you just banged it down. And she said, that's the kind of people we want in our business, because so often, the stuff that we have the door is shut and you need to bang it down. And, and, um, and it's true. And I see it all the time. The people that we get in to interview, the people that we push to get through, or I push to get through the door, the person that you're oftentimes speaking with might be the HR person, might, is, is unlikely to be the decision maker. And you almost need to be finding out who is that decision maker. How do I keep being persistent? And the ones that come onto my radar are the people that are like, liking me on LinkedIn, uh, retweeting my tweets, and saying, hey, this, that, and the other, and sending stuff to me. Be persistent, be in people's faces, and knock that door down, because it's, not, it's very rarely swinging open for you like an automatic door. So that's the first one, be an arrogant twat. <laughs> 
Um, and this is another lesson from that first, first job. And, and my first boss, he, drew, he, he took me out for, for coffee um, early on. It was maybe three months in. And he, and he drew a circle. And he, and he drew, drew it like that. And then he drew a larger circle. And he said, if, if the first circle is you, and the larger circle is your comfort zone, he said, we want to push you out here. And he said, that's why you're feeling stressed. That's why you're feeling scared sometimes. And that's why you're feeling like you don't know what the answers are. And he said, that's good. Because when you're operating in your comfort zone, that's when you're not really learning anything anymore. That's, you know, you, you know, and Jamie mentioned it really well, you've got to take some risks sometimes and you've really got to push yourself. And I think that being outside of your comfort zone, be that moving to a different city, doing the job that you don't think you're quite capable of, or, or, or trying something, or, or being that persistent person if you're not that arrogant twat. That's really, really important, and constantly do that, and always be challenging yourself. I think through my career, I've, I've mixed it up a couple of times, and um, I've gone and worked in another market. I've worked in different industries. Um, I challenge myself to try and do different things, and I think that that's really important, because when you do that, you learn. And when you learn, um, it becomes interesting and challenging and stressful, and you hate it sometimes, but it becomes interesting in the long run. So that's the second story. Uh, and the final story um, is do what you're passionate about. And, and, and the story I'll, I'll, I'll tell you there is, I remember when I was in, um, in year eight at school, my father wanted me to be an engineer, passionate. My dad's an engineer, great engineer, but he wanted me to be an engineer. And um, I remember him saying, you're not doing very well in this, you know, mathematics and physics and all these kind of things. You, need, you know, these are the things you need to be doing to be an engineer. And um, I really want to be an engineer, Dad. <laughs> and, and I wanted to do drama. And I remember saying to my dad, can, can I do drama? He goes, well, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to be an actor? And I was like, mm -hmm. and, I was, and, and the answer to that was no, because I didn't think I was going to be an actor. Um, but I, I reflect back, and I, and I ended up not doing drama, but I reflect back on that now, and I think about the things I'm doing right now, this second, and every day I'm doing performances, and I just think back that perhaps that drama expertise would have really helped me, because in the end I ended up in a career that kind of married to my interests, because performance and performing and, 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 and all of that kind of stuff was, was, was truly what I was really interested in, the drama, not being an actor. And so, do what you're interested in. <coughs> do what you're passionate about. Don't do what you think is going to pay you the most. Don't do what you think is expected of you. You've all done degrees, um, but that doesn't mean you need to work in that field. Um, and so do what you're passionate about, because if you do what you're passionate about, you'll work harder at it, you'll like it, you'll work on the weekends, and you'll be good at it probably. And that's what you've got to do to um, to get ahead. And I think so, if, 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 I, if, the, if, if I can instill anything, it's get out there and just, just do what you love. And don't worry about the rest of the stuff because it will, it will work itself out after that. Don't worry about career progression and all that. I've never had a career plan. It's just I've always done what I've been passionate about and interested in at the time. And, it, and it's worked out okay for me. So, thank you.